How's it going guys? It's Marco working with Functionland to bring you the advanced reset process for the FX Blocks Lite Plus aka the RK1 board. First thing we're going to want to do is of course remove the four screws from the USB-C housing to take that out and remove the four screws from the bottom of the blocks to be able to remove the SBC from the case. If your blocks looks like this, then you know you can continue with this process because this guide applies to you. Now we'll go ahead and go to the docs website. Um, we'll go ahead and click on the function yard testnet hardware and then re-image RK1 document so that we can have a list of all of the software that we need that we need to download for this guide. Go ahead and install the drivers by downloading the link, extracting, and then going ahead and running the installer called driver install.exe. Go ahead and approve the Windows permissions, click on install driver, and you should be good to go to close these windows now. Next, we're going to go ahead and install the RK Dev Tool app. This is to actually, this is the software to be able to flash the firmware to the blocks. Go ahead and unzip it, click into the folder, and go ahead and run the executable. Windows more than likely is going to mark it as uh, potentially unsafe. Go ahead and ignore, and we can see at the bottom no devices found, which is as expected because we have not connected the blocks to the computer yet. Now we're going to get the full node image. Uh, we want to click on minimal full image minimal um, and going ahead and unzipping that as well. And we'll be using this at a later step. Now, last thing we need is going to be the SPL loader. Um, we're going to be needing this in the next step. It is basically um, the boot process for the blocks. Now, we're going to want to short the two pins that are labeled boot. Unfortunately, you can't see it from this side of the blocks, but they are the two pins that are um, closest to the Wi-Fi card. Um, you'll need a male-to-male -male jumper cable to short those pins. Next, you'll go ahead and connect the USB cable into the middle USB-C port to connect that one to the computer and then connect the blocks to power. Now, when we open up our RK Dev tool on Windows, we can see that it says found one mass Chrome device. This tells us that the blocks has been recognized by the computer. Now we'll go ahead and select the SPL loader for row one, and then go ahead and find and select the full image for row two. We'll want to make sure that row two storage type says EMMC before continuing. And then you can go ahead, click write by address and go ahead and uh, start the firmware flashing process. This is a process that takes roughly two minutes, really relatively short amount of time. Um, and then you'll get a download image OK message when you know it's done. Now we can go ahead and uh, turn off the blocks, remove the USB connector and the jumper cable. And now we can go ahead and reconnect the power so that we can uh, apply the update to the blocks. You'll see a series of lights. Um, and you'll know you're done when you get the flashing cyan blue lights. Now in this guide, I don't go over how to format the NVMe drive. That will be in a, another video. Now, after that is done, you're getting that light. You're safe to uh, put the blocks back together. I like to screw down the bottom port first and then the USB-C housing, after which you can go ahead and connect your blocks back to power and continue the app setup process 
um, to connect it to to your Wi-Fi and to the t network. Well, that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you found it informational. And we'll see you guys in the next one.